Welcome and thanks for joining us here on another edition of the Ghana Web Mundia, a show put together uh, for the purpose of the coverage of the 2022 FIFA World Cup in Qatar. Today, our conversation will be on the country Qatar. We are going to look at a number of issues, the cost of the World Cup, and then a lot of related issues surrounding the 2022 FIFA World Cup in the Gulf region. My name is Joel Shen and welcome to this edition. Today, I'll be joined by two gentlemen, uh, Emmanuel Ayamga, Perez, Ezra Kwao. When I come back from the break, I'll introduce them proper and then we start the conversation. The show is brought to you by Kempon Travel and Tour, the official traveling agency for the 2022 FIFA World Cup. We'll be back after this break. Welcome back from the break. It's still Ghana World Mundia, a show we've put together uh, for the purpose of the 2022 FIFA World Cup coverage. Once the World Cup starts, we will switch to live commentary. The show is brought to you by Kempon Travel and Tour, the official traveling agency for the 2022 FIFA World Cup. To join me do the discussion for the country, Qatar, is Emmanuel Ayamga, sports editor for Pulse Ghana. Ima, uh, good afternoon and thanks for joining me here. Thank and you. then my own boss, Ogoran, Perez, Ezra Kwao, a sports editor for Ghana Web. Uh, good afternoon, gentlemen, and thanks for joining me here. It's good, good afternoon. Uh, uh, today, we are looking at uh, the country Qatar for the 2022 FIFA World Cup. We are looking at the host, uh, the burden, and then the everything that went on to Qatar uh, getting the naming right. Uh, I'll start with you, um, Perez, looking at the countries who put in the bed, the United States, Australia, and all that. Qatar finally won the bid. Well, it was quite a surprising one, you know, when we catch someone. But I think, was it 2010 when the whole bidding thing was done where Qatar? We all thought it was going to be the US put together the best bid. You had uh, Australia in there, you had other countries that we offered in terms of football, in terms of marketing, in terms of all the other factors considered appealed more as host of the World Cup than Qatar. But for some strange reasons that, you know, the FIFA committee or the, I think the executive committee decided to choose Qatar. But you have to look at all of the work that Qatar did that, you know, brought them here. And you might not, you might have issues with them in terms of their more, uh, you know, their human rights record in terms of their football record and a whole lot of other things. But they did a great deal of work by putting together a great amount of work to ensure that they, they're able to turn heads in their favor. They spent as much as 200 million, you know, dollars on, on lobbying for the World Cup. That's how much they spent. I think Australia was the next. Australia spent two, 24 million. So you have to look at how much even they, they lobbied, how much they how much they put into the lobby compared to Australia. US invested just five million into the World Cup. So Qatar right from the onset, they knew, you know, the buttons to click, they knew who to speak to. I remember you go back to 2010, one of the CAF, you know, executive committee meetings, they organized the meeting for CAF. They footed the cost of, yeah. you know, all those who are going to attend the meeting, everything. And in turn, what they got in turn was that they were the only country that was allowed to pitch their, their, their bidding, you know, proposal to CAF. And, you know, CAF, it's in as much as we might not be a powerful blog, we have a lot of influence when it comes to... 54 votes. You know, so if you're able to turn heads within the CAF region, and when you listen to people who follow their thinking, hopefully, Qatar won mainly because of Asia and Africa. Yeah. And that's, Qatar played their cards so by being able to make sure they, they penetrated carved then. They also look at a whole lot of things. So they, there are a whole lot of issues that I'm sure we're going to get into when it comes to their human rights and other things. But for all things considered, Qatar for me showed that they were ready to host it and they ended right by investing hugely. They knew the buttons to click, they knew who to speak to. I remember they, according to reports that Ben Harman decided to pull out of the 2010 FIFA race because of this. You know, he's a Qatari and... Yeah. He, he reached some form of an agreement with Sablata that, okay, I'm not going to challenge you because if Asia had gone and he had the money, yes, and when, when it comes to fair elections, money counts a lot. If he had decided, <laughs> it's not only FIFA, <laughs> every <laughs> almost election, every election in the know, world. If he had decided to go and fight uh, uh, Blatter, Blatter yeah. would have had only, only maybe Europe, Europe on his side, maybe a little of influence in Africa. But with money, especially in Africa, the guy would have turned the heads. But he decided to step back all in the interest of Qatar hosting the World Cup. So you have to look at even the kind of the PR that they did. 
getting the likes of David Beckham, David Trace, all those guys on board. You know, so they've, they've invested hugely. I have my reservations that I feel that in giving the, the hosting right to Qatar, football once again overlooked the moral aspect of the game that we've been talking about a lot. But of course, Charlie, money counts. And once the money is good enough, Charlie, we go. Ima, we had bid from South Korea, Japan, United States, Qatar, um, Mexico, and Indonesia. They pulled out uh, at the latter stages. Asia, Africa, Europe, South America, and now Asia. Were you uh, surprised, especially now that we, we are getting the first World Cup in the Arab world, considering the countries who were competing for the bid, were you surprised that at the end of the day, um, Qatar won? I was a bit surprised, but then in hindsight, like if you look at what has happened from that time to now, like you yeah. said, I mean, this is the first time that the World Cup is going to an Arab nation. Yeah. And because, you know, when Sabrata was there, he had this policy that he wanted the World Cup to be alternated between the continents. And just like we have uh, the Northern Americans and then we have Southern America, but then we've had the World Cup hosted in both parts of yes. America. But in Asia, we haven't had that in the Arab part of Asia. And so I, I, I knew there was a time would come where the World Cup will be taken to an Arab nation. But I didn't expect it to come this early. Why? Because I didn't know which country there would be ready to, to host, host. The, the whole world. Because if you look at Qatar, Qatar is a very small country. And they have, they have a population of about just 3 million. And so I, I thought maybe they wouldn't be able to host the rest of the world. But if you look at the things that they've put in place, I mean, like Perez said, money does a lot of things. And they have the money. When it comes to money, they really have it. And they've shown that if, even for the things that they cannot do with like for the other things that they cannot do, for for the things that they can do with money, they will do them, and that is why they are they are bringing stadiums that will be dismantled after them. I mean, it hasn't been done anywhere before. Um, they have made sure that they have been able to clean the human rights aspect of themselves yeah. by bringing in people that everybody. I mean, everybody loves David Beckham, so if Beckham is in front of you and he's an ambassador for a tournament, if you like Beckham, you, 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 know, you will like the tournament as well. So they know what they are doing. I mean, they have a good plan. They have a plan that would make people forget about the human rights aspect of whatever they are doing. Like Perez said, I know we'll come to that, but um, in terms of that side, I don't think we should have overlooked because football has got into a state where it's like, it's money, money, money. Where the money is, is where your votes will yeah. go to. And like Perez said, Africa definitely, <laughs> for Africa, we all know. I mean, from the, <laughs> CAF, from the CAF elections, we all know how the politics works. It's who has the money. And Sebrata was really involved in getting Qatar to host the World Cup. I mean, he was, he was like a darling boy. There's a, there's a community that is coming on, on Netflix. I don't know if you've seen the, the trailer. There's no. a, it's coming on Netflix UK, actually. I, I, I've seen, oh, I've oh. seen the, the, the only one I've seen was the one they did for the captains of the various national teams. No, no, no. this one is a documentary especially on Netflix okay. on how Qatar won the bid and oh. FIFA's corruption. And there was this video where Sebrata was speaking like we are sitting now and somebody came and threw money at him for... <laughs> I mean, it was so embarrassing, but... I mean, it's, those are some of the things. Everybody knows that money went into getting them the, the hosting right. Uh, there. The, uh, there are some people who believe that the, the downfall of uh, Zablata, uh, Michel, the Platini, and all the others was because the UK lost the bid to host the 2018 World Cup, and then the US lost the bid in 2022. So they decided to team up as, ah, you people, we, we, we know what you are doing. <laughs> so if this is what you are going to do to us, then we also have to expose you. You see, <laughs> when a thief is caught, definitely they will, find, they will find ways to justify whatever they've done. I think it's just like the Ghana situation. I mean, everybody that was caught up in the Ghana expose, I believe, was guilty. If they weren't guilty, they would be in office right now. And that's why some of them are not in office currently. I think Mr. Blatter and Michel Platini were culpable in some moment. I mean, there were things they were doing, everybody was saying these things were bad, but they wanted to be caught before. Now, I don't think they were just taken out of office without taking, being taken through the normal procedure. I mean, they were taken to court. The FBI yeah. raided their office. They found documents that incriminated them. And that is why they are not in office currently. And then they, they were caught in action. Yeah, so you can say, I mean, you can say those things were part. But in the end, it was by their own actions that took them out of office. So for me, like, I would never, like, for me, I'm not in support of Qatar getting the right to host the World Cup, all right. But I'm a, and I'm in support of the World Cup being alternated through continent. So it, it had gone to Europe. He had gone to Russia, he had even come to Africa. And I think it was time for it to go to the Arab countries as well. All right, so we're still doing the Qatar as a nation uh, on this episode of Ghana Web uh, Mundia. And then let's talk about the do's and don'ts. You know, in 2014, uh, we, we hear some Ghanaians, they went to Brazil, they enjoyed all the goodies that came with it. But Qatar, you can't, the things you did in Brazil, 
that the authorities uh, overlooked, you cannot do it in Qatar. Uh, let's go through some of the uh, do's and, and don'ts. Uh, if, uh, if you have them, uh, uh, okay, so let's go through the don'ts before. So uh, the don'ts, uh, the first one I want us to look at quick, quick, is that uh, do not look at people or the addresses for too long. Uh, in, <laughs> Seriously. In, in an Arab world. Uh, <laughs> and then do not litter in public spaces as it, it will cause you heavy fines. So for our brothers who have been littering around on our streets, uh, you have to be careful in Qatar. And then do not shake hands with women. Just greet them politely. So if I meet Ernestina, hi, Tina, then you move. Then also, do not take photos of people without their permission. Also part of the don't in Qatar. Do not wear short clothes on public places. So at the stadium, you cannot be wearing any bareback, any mini skirts. And also, uh, do not consume too much alcohol. Alcohol will not be... You cannot take alcohol to the stadium. But an hour before the game and an hour after the game, uh, you get some to buy in the confines of the stadium. And then, do not drink and drive. I think that one is standard. Uh, guys, these are the don'ts in Qatar. You see, Ayanga mentioned a point that he doesn't support the, the granting of the right of the World Cup to, to Qatar. And these are some of the... You look at some of the things he mentioned. They are purely human rights issues. Yeah. And this is a country that, by virtue of their religion, uh, have quite extreme or very stretched... You know principles on religion and i feel that's where football failed a lot because football is supposed to break down some of these barriers mm -hmm. the barriers of you know autocracy dictatorship all these things football is supposed to serve as the thing that bridges all these things so when you give football when you give what has i feel now we used to say that religion is the opium of the masses yeah. i think for now football. football has or replaced sports. religion as the opium of the masses so if you're going to give something that the whole world feeds on to, a nation with such a terrible human record, you need to set in place certain conditions that maybe after the tournament, it will change, may have some you know, widespread ramifications on how they view some of these things. But FIFA did not. They just sent them, someone took money, took things, and just decided to give them the right at their expense. Now you can't just have fun. You can't hang out with your woman in Qatar. But in the football season, we all see a lot of things. People hugging each other. People kissing in public. Yeah. That's part of the game we are supposed to enjoy. Even, even at the stadium, when when there is a goal, like the one <laughs> Asamoah <laughs> scored in 2010 against the US, we saw pictures of Ghanaians yeah, at the stadium breaking yeah. bottles, but you can't do, you, you can't do that. And that, that that's, footballers even score goals and go and kiss their partners in the crowd. You can't do that. Yeah, so, <laughs> in as much as you, you would want to understand the fact that, okay, it's their country, when you go to, when you do what the Romans do, there's a major worry because it's more like by giving the football to FIFA, we are shining a lot of light on the very things that the world should not encourage. So we are all of a sudden admitting that, you know, autocracy or dictatorship is good. We are all of a sudden accepting that it's good to, you know, impede the rights of, 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 of women. So these are some of the issues that, for me, and that's why I have issues with the likes of Gary Neville and David Beckham and all the other guys we'll who directly or indirectly have accepted ambassador because you need to have moral principles. Yeah. And as long as the Qatar issue is concerned, we are, we are bereft of some of these things. And they should have considered them. But hey, it's their turn. Whether we like it or not, November 20 to December 18 will 18. be there. And we just have to embrace them. Once you decide to go into their country and enjoy their tournament, you need to abide by these things. And uh, there are those who say that in every society, there are rules. So... The, the popular one that we all grew up uh, uh, and we are told, if you go to Rome, you do what the Romans do. How different is this from this general narrative that if you go to Rome, you, know, you do when, what the Romans I do? I ask this question, I answer it from this point. Um, I mean, there are rules in every society, yeah. fine. But even in oppressed society, there are rules as well. Yeah. So if I, can, if, when, if I come here and you tell me I can't put my phone on this table, you are oppressing me. But it's a rule that you have. It doesn't mean the rule is right. So I think, like Perez said, football was supposed to be that link. I mean, it was supposed to be that too. A liberator. To, 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 to change society, to change some of the ills of society. What we've done currently is to tell the people that even if you are wrong or you are doing something wrong and you have money, 
then you are excused. You can you can go ahead and do whatever you are. That's what we have, we've done with giving Qatar the, the right. Mm -hmm. Because obviously they haven't changed. They are whatever the way they see the world has not changed. They've tried to accommodate some things, but ultimately they are still going strong on whatever they are strong on. They haven't they haven't changed their stance on some of the things like alcohol, which I think I mean you can talk about the ills or the bad side of alcohol, but mm -hmm. I don't think you can you can tell somebody not to drink. You, maybe you can say don't drink and drive yeah. because if you drink and drive, that's a crime and that's a standard something yeah. that is, is everywhere. everywhere. But to say people should not take a call at all is it's not something like. And they, they are, it, one of the don'ts is that if, if you are in town and you meet a, a lady, you can't shake a lady. Oh. I mean, like if you meet a nice, are, like, if, if, if you meet entry, a nice lady, like, you can't meet like like, like like MFA. You can say, oh hello MFA. Hi, you know, you know, you can't do that. One in of the most absurd ones is that if you meet a lady in town, you can't you can't speak to her if you don't know her. So I'm wondering how do they chat to their ladies and, and make them their wives or girlfriends how, how do they do it most because, times arrange oh okay i mean that doesn't work here obviously man. so i think there's a lot that needs to change it but i mean like like Perez said we've allowed them to have their way and i fear that this will be like um a, a point where other nations will learn from because they will know i mean previously if i didn't mean the world cup had been taken from them on, on the basis that because the human rights record is very terrible i'm telling you i mean people have come out and spoken about how they are being mistreated in yeah. Qatar, yeah. workers are being, they are working seven times a day, they are working 12 hour shifts a day, they are, and they are being underpaid, and when they go there, their passports are seized, so they can't even come. They mm -hmm. are allowed, I think, three days or some, I think a week or something to come back to their own countries and then go back. It's, it's terrible. I mean, these are stories that, and these are not lies. You, the Supreme Committee has tried to use PR to whitewash yeah. the stories that are coming up, but they, these are realities that are happening. And so I think if you really want to tackle okay. the social side okay. of things, we need to take them on, but we've allowed them to have their way. So I fear it might happen again. They will not have another chance to correct them. He fears it might happen again. Those are the don'ts uh, in Qatar. And then one of the do's is that when you get to Qatar, you, you have to make sure that you change your currency to their, uh, to their currency. It's not like, excuse me, in Ghana that you can use other currency like the dollar to trade. To trade. It can't happen. Uh, in Qatar, you we'll go for a quick break. Uh, when we come back, uh, we we'll continue the the discussion. You know, the English national team and uh, their captain Harry Kane will be wearing uh, a band trying to uh, protest against the human rights issues in Qatar. But there are two poster boys, Gary Neville and then David Beckham. They are also going to be ambassadors for Qatar. Conflict of interest, or they are just doing their business. This is Ghana World Mundial. When we come back, we we'll continue the discussions. Welcome back from the break. This is Ghana World Mundial brought to you by Kempo Travel and Tours, the official traveling agency for the 2022 FIFA World Cup in Qatar. Uh, we are talking about the country Qatar as far as this World Cup is concerned. But before we continue, let's take the Ghana World Trivia for today. Alright, so we watched the Ghana Web Trivia for today. And then before I went for the break, I was talking about the English national team captain Hurricane going to wear a band uh, protesting against human rights issues in Qatar. Whilst their poster boys, uh, former poster boys David Beckham and then Gary Neville, have been appointed as ambassadors. 
for the Qatar World Cup. But let's listen to uh, David Beckham as he spoke to the FIFA team on why he accepted to be an ambassador for Qatar. I've always said that the World Cup is for, for everybody. You know, and I think that when a country gets to host a World Cup for the first time, it's a special moment because it changes people's lives, it unites people, it inspires children, and this is Qatar's opportunity to showcase what they're all about. You know, I've been part of a league in America when I first arrived that had probably 15 teams in the league, and now there's almost, there's going to be 30 teams in the league all with their own you know, football stadiums. Um, so I've seen the change. You know, I was part of obviously an American league that wasn't as established as the European leagues that I've played for. Everybody deserves that moment to showcase what they are about. And that's what football does. Football unites families, it unites people. I've always said that it's so important for the biggest game and the biggest sporting competition to be shared. This game is for everybody. And that's why it's important that it does go to different territories, that it does go to different countries, that it does go to new places that have never been able to host a competition like this. You see countries come together, you see fans come together, whether it's from Brazil, Argentina, England, Germany, France, and fans come together to celebrate the game. It's what football is. Changes people's lives, makes people happy. All right, so you saw David Beckham. He was a poster boy. The ladies love him. Everybody loves David Beckham. Explaining why he accepted to be an ambassador for Qatar. According to reports, he has been paid a whooping 200 million euros to be an ambassador for Qatar, whilst Gary Neville also took more than 100 million euros. This time around, guys, we are talking about the stadiums and the stories behind them. The stadiums, if you see it, my goodness, they are nice. I would even prefer that when they are dismantling it and all that, they bring one to Ghana, and then we try and fix that thing at the Accra Sports the, Stadium. So let me cut in on that. I think there, there is some, from the ministry, there is some negotiations or discussions going on. Yeah. Yeah. The, the sports minister has a few times met his Qatari counterpart. They've had yeah. some discussions. A lot of countries are lobbying, yeah. developing. So it depends on who gets the best lobby. But if we are lucky enough, we might have one of them here. I, 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 I want the... <laughs> The <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I, we put down uh, the, the, the stadium I'm talking about. That's the one, but uh, the stadiums and then the stories behind them. What the English want to do as part of their protest to human rights abuse, and what their two former poster boys are also doing conflict of interest. The stadiums and all that. I am going to let me take it. Okay. <laughs> for the English boys, for, I mean, it's not just them. I mean, even as Wenga, who I know to be a, a man with integrity, has been, he has had a, a reserved view about Akata. I don't know what has happened. I don't know what happened because he's working with FIFA and FIFA. Is, I, I don't know. I, I can't substantiate that. So, But for, for Beckham and Gary Neville, it's obvious something has entered their pockets and they are just, do, they are working for their money. That's what I can see. Because I don't see how, because, and these are guys, for Beckham, I know he, he isn't really vocal about social issues, but Gary Neville is somebody who is really vocal. Yeah. I mean, he's vocal about politics in the UK, he speaks about ills in society and all that. So I was really surprised when I saw that he was one of the ambassadors. But like I said, I mean, you are saying a thing. So people are working for the. I mean, even these are guys, these are millionaires. These are yeah. Euro millionaires and dollar Euro millionaires, and they are still like looking for more. So I can understand from that point of view. For the, for the stadiums, um, <laughs> I think my, my favorite, the one I I, I I find very fascinating is the um, um, the Stadium 9. 974. Where, where we play, Gagana will play their first game against Portugal. Yeah, 97. Because when I was reading about that, I, I, I learned um, they use shipping containers yeah. to do the stadium. I mean, and it, it's a beautiful stadium if you look at the way they've done it. I mean, to use shipping containers, I mean, nobody would have thought of that. But they use shipping containers. And I, I heard the name, the 974 came from 
the number of shipping containers, the number of shipping containers were 974. And also Carter's international dialing code is 97 plus 96. So I mean, I mean, that is something interesting that they thought about and they used to do it. And then the Education City Stadium as well. Yeah. I, I'm told in that, the, the city is like the global um, excellence hub of Qatar. And that is where you find most of the elite universities yeah. in Qatar. So, I mean, I think all the names that they give are names that are, are strategic and they know why they are doing them. And that's why I say from the PR pers perspective, Qatar really know what they are doing. And I, I think um, anybody that hears the name and the story behind those stadiums will really like it. The stories behind them as they uh, it's been reported, which stories have you heard so far about the people working on the stadium and all that? I've heard a lot. Um, even myself, I'm writing an, an article I want to write before the month ends on Carter's um, human rights record. Because I think we are hosting the World Cup at a human cost. I mean, we can talk about the millions that have been spent to organize the World Cup, but it's also, it's also a human cost. Because thousands of people have died to make Carter's dream of hosting the World Cup possible. Mm -hmm. And who is talking for those people? Because it looks like we first shelved... And that's why I'm disappointed in football. Uh, you and football, is also quiet. Everybody's quiet. I don't know what is happening. I don't know whether people fear the, Qatar, the Qatari people to speak about it. So I don't know if everybody is now, has now become a coward. I don't know. Because ordinarily, if this was any other country, we would have had campaigns and things going on. But it looks like everybody is, like we've put everybody is like, oh, okay, it will go on no matter what we do. So let's just... But assuming there was a threat of Qatar losing their right to host the World Cup, I'm sure things would have been more serious. Because, I mean, like I said earlier, people are dying. People have died. People are still dying as we speak today. And if you if you read some of the, I mean, the, the, I read an article on the new frame of Qatari uh, people, who, Africans who had gone to Qatar to work, and they were texting. And the one guy was like, he was even texting from his hospital bed. And according to him, since he went to Qatar, the 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 the, the moment that he has felt the most free or the most convenient was when he was at the hospital. Can you imagine? Wow. I mean, when you are home, you, should, you have to feel comfortable at home. So imagine if you are not comfortable at home, you are you feel very you, you, you like you are scared of working, you are not free at home and even at your workplace. And the place where you feel your most refuge is when you are in the hospital. It, it's that sad. So for me, I think we've really let people down by allowing the World Cup to be hosted in Qatar and ignoring all the things that are happening in there. First, Gary Neville is one that we know he has been against even what we call sports washing. Millionaires from Russia, Middle East coming to invest their money in football. Uh, he has been against Roman Abramovich, what the city owners are doing, Paris and Germain, and glazes. all that. Even, even the Glazers. But now, he is somebody that is going to uh, be an ambassador for a country that there's been several reports of human rights abuse. Even that his country, they've taken side on what to do, but he has gone the other way and then the stories. What's really man, man must chop. <laughs> 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 man for chop. That's the thing. And you see, and that's the the thing that Qatar got over everyone. The money. Yeah. They use the money to induce almost everyone. Qatar is not hosting a tournament because they care about football. They want to develop their yeah. football. No. They are using the it's a proper PR move. They don't care about how much they are going to get or how much they are going to lose. No. They just want to look The good. same way those guys are controlling City, the, yeah. the Newcastle takeover. They are not doing it because they, they want them to win trophy. No. They are using it to clean the image of their countries. The images of their countries have been battled over the year with allegations of human rights, allegations of, you know, trampling on the rights of women and all those kind of things. Now they realize that the whole world is hooked on football. So unless you use football, to clean our image. And it's sad that the lives of Gary Neville, who for years have demonstrated some form of principle when it comes to protecting the, game. Know, the, the marginalized or protecting the minors, decide opted to fall for this. And that's what Qatar has done. What they've done is to use money, you know, because once we scour the end, you know, you can do almost yeah. everything aside buying life. So they've used the money to cover everything. They've papered over all the cracks that we all know. Africans are dying almost every day in Qatar. The likes of France, England, or all the national teams, they are trying to come together to make sure that the, the migrants who are working their ass off in Qatar are able to get what much that they them. deserve. Yeah. But you ask yourself, even CAF, our own CAF, what has he said? No. You know, FIFA itself, these questions have come up almost every day. What have they said about it? Nothing. So it's more like football decided to take the money 
and allow people to die and allow people right to be trampled upon and a, a whole lot of nonsense to go and that's what Qatar is and it's not going to be the last it's oh, going yeah, to go yeah. on because now they've realized that okay if we are able to use some money and penetrate through football we can get Newcastle you look at Newcastle yeah. now you look at Man City Man City fans don't care about what they are doing no, no. you look at once once they are giving them what they want to make the their team bigger you know you really look at those who took over uh, Newcastle and there's a connection between them and, and how the, the the Saudi government called Jamal Khashoggi an American journalist who is talking about no one is talking about it because it's money you know so it's 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 quite reprehensible it's quite sad that on this occasion where the most for me, the most powerful instrument in the world for social change decided to sleep and sit aloof and watch all these things to go in. And that's what we come to do. For us, maybe we enjoy our game, but at the cost of human lives, at the cost of the, uh, of the rights of a whole lot of people. And that's quite sad. At the cost of human life and a lot going on, David Beckham, uh, David Trezeguet, and then uh, Gary Neville, I think Eto, our own Eto is also an ambassador for the 2022 uh, FIFA World Cup in Qatar. So this has been the discussion on this episode of the Ghana World uh, Mundial. Uh, but let's talk about the cost. And then we link it to the top five most expensive FIFA uh, World Cup. I will go over it quick and then uh, I take your opinions. Now, uh, fifth place, that is, we are looking at the top five, uh, is Japan, Korea when they co-hosted their first World Cup in the 21st century. And they spent 7 uh, million, 7 billion, sorry, it's B, million B, yeah, 7 billion. And then they fit. Uh, fourth is Germany with 4.3 billion when they hosted in 2006. I know you're asking, why are we saying that Germany is ahead of the 2002 World Cup? It's because Germany hosted the World Cup as a single unit. But in 2002, Japan and then Korea, they split the, uh, the cost. In 2014, Brazil, yes, when Brazil uh, hosted the World Cup, a lot of demonstrations happened because they never understood why the government will use 11.6 billion to host a tournament when <laughs> the country was in total mess. And then in 2018, Russia, we thought we had seen it all when Russia uh, invested 18 billion to host the World Cup. But now, Qatar, the amount they spent on this coming World Cup is 14 times bigger the amount Russia spent in 2018. And guys, 200 billion before, dollars. Before I even come to that. They say our national debt is more than 400 <laughs> billion dollars. So it means that if <laughs> Qatar could have just. You know, you have the money to split our, our, our money into two. Before we come, let me, let me touch for the last time on the human rights record of yeah. Qatar. You know what happened in Russia? People knew the, the record of Russia. People yeah. knew what Russia were doing. We ignored it and allowed them to host the World Cup. And we've seen the blowback from that. Yeah. They've now invaded Ukraine and they've caused the whole... Look at what's happening in the whole world. I mean... They are the reason why our government is always telling us that Ukraine, oh. Russia, war. They, 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 but the, they are the reason why now... But, but the signs were there. Can came before Ghana. If football had dealt with Russia in the beginning yeah. when the allegations were coming and people were complaining, maybe we wouldn't have gotten to, the, to where we are now. But they allowed them. We are now banning them from the World Cup and then from the Euros and all that. But is it not too late? It is. It is because if you had, if you had, if, if you had taken the hosting rights from them in 2018, 18. that would have been a huge blow to them. And maybe you could have gotten them to do the right thing, but you didn't. And I, that's what I'm saying. With Qatar, allowing them to go ahead and host it will tell them that, oh, Russia were allowed, they did it. Look at what happened two years after. The, uh, Qatar is also doing the same thing. And another nation will also emerge and do the maybe same North thing. Korea. Because they will know they have money. Yeah. At the time when where North Korea hosted, I mean, they were, one of, they were a superpower who were unleashing bombs on other countries, other small, smaller countries in their territory, but we allow them to host it, and this is a blowback from that. Now, let me, let me come back to um, the main one. Yeah. Um, Qatar, the money that they are, they are spending, Charlie, the, the, the money billion. is insane. It, it's insane, because it, like it, you it, said... It, it, can, it can buy the top 200 football clubs Yeah, because in the world almost combined. everything about the world... You know, most of the countries that we've mentioned already have some facilities that could host... Yeah. Qatar is not a football nation. I mean, Russia has a league that is one of the biggest in Europe. Mm -hmm. And so they have stadiums from Shakhtar Donetsk and 
and uh, um, uh, uh, Zenit and, 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 and Rubin Kazan and the CSC Moscow, Moscow that they can yeah. use to, to host. But Qatar is not really a football nation. I mean, they are not trying to build their football. And so they don't even have the facilities. They didn't, now let me say they didn't, because they didn't, now they do. Now they didn't have the facilities to host the whole of the world. But they had to spend money. And they spent money on almost everything. Even the, the and there's a reason why we've shifted the World Cup from the usual, usual June, July, June, July to November, yeah. December, because the weather over there is not favorable for people that will be going there. And, and even with that, the stadiums will be will be having technology. I mean, they are installing air, condi air condition technology mm, so, that, 4, so that people will be able to have a feel of their normal temperature they were, they were used to in their country. So for me, I think the money is enormous. I don't, I don't even think a country should be allowed to spend this much is there money? In, no, but, but I mean, there should be a cap to how much you can spend. Mm -hmm. That's why you, you, are, you are capping what clubs can spend. I mean, if it's the clubs, yeah. why don't you allow yeah. them to spend in any amount that they have? But you are capping how much they can spend on transfers. You are capping how much teams can spend in yeah. terms of their budget. And that's yeah. why Barcelona are suffering currently. Why are you not capping countries? So what next? Now that they've spent over 200 billion, it means if, let in, me say... In 2026, US, Mexico, and then... It, <laughs> and there's pressure for them to outdo them, but of yeah. course they have the stadiums already, yeah. so maybe they will spend less. But I don't think a country should have been allowed to spend this much on it. I mean, there's more to, to life than just football. And, but I, 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 like we've already discussed there, it looks like we've relegated everything and we are now like just focusing on the football. So that's what will happen. Let, mm, let me take yours. PR is expensive. That's the thing. She wants the whole world to think that you are a powerful nation, you have all the things that it takes to rub shoulders with that we have to provide you and that's what Qatar have done. Like I am gonna say, they never had the 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 stadium and all the things to host the tournament. They had to quickly, you know, pump a whole lot of money into it to turn things in their favor. And sometimes you sit and you wonder what the FIFA you know committee considered before giving them the slow. Because unlike America that had Football history, yeah, you know, uh, they, they've hosted it yeah, before. Yeah, before. And then, Me Mexico too, they've hosted the World Cup before. You know, so you ask yourself, what was the, the history? What went into the decision, really, to give Qatar the the the, the bid aside of the money influence? Because honestly, even Morocco were more prepared than Qatar. Let's be yeah. honest. You know, yeah. even yes, you know, so because they didn't have the infrastructure, now they had to invest. They had to pay videos, and again, the weather that the weather also. That's if so they even have to invest in it as well. You ask her where, where are these monies coming from? At what cost? How much are people sacrificing for all of these things? What's going on? And those questions don't bother to, to FIFA or all the people. No. All they care about is that they want the stadiums ready. They want the whole world to go and play that. But there are serious issues. And that's what I'm saying. They've done their PR. It's working. At the end of the day, they will host a very good World Cup. And instead of talking about the evils of the country, you and I will be spending time talking about the skills in the Messi food, yeah. how maybe I'm hoping Argentina wins the World Cup for Messi's sake, how Argentina won the World Cup, also how, we, for the Black Stars. how Ronaldo will, will kick out in the group stages, uh, you know, how Otuado pulled up some Instead of yes. talking about the very issues, humane yeah. issues affecting them, we'll be talking football. And it, it takes our attention from the very things that affect the survival of other things. And that's the wrong that the sin that football has committed. But for them, they don't care. For the Crown Prince and his people, at the end of the day, they sit somewhere, you know, pop some champagne and enjoy that. They've invested what they've hosted the world and they're going to remember that as a country that pumps so much money into yeah. it. And for, gave, for at least the next two years. And gave very good spectacle, you know, a very good advertisement for, you know, the Gulf region. They are going to use it. They claim that the World Cup is going to spare the growth of football yeah. in their country. We live to see, but again, like I said, if you want good PR, you have to pay for it. And that's what they've done. They have the money, they have the oil money to back whatever they want to do, and they've spent it wisely. There are even suggestions that the 200 billion figure put out by the sports minister, yeah. it's, 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 it's a, yes. yeah. because initially it was around 220, 250, then it came out to 200. So it tells you how much is going on that we don't know. And we know that they won't tell you exactly what they do. What They will tell you what you need to do, okay. yeah. not exactly what the, the reflection on the ground. So yes, they, they have the money, and let's just hope that they give us a good time. And anyway, the blasters and Argentina and Germany, do well. Let's hope they give us a good tournament, irrespective of the human rights issues currently going on in Qatar. This has been another uh, exciting episode of the Ghana Web Mundial, a show put together for the purpose of Ghana Web's coverage of the 2022 FIFA World Cup. What do you expect in Qatar, gentlemen? 30 seconds, 30 seconds. For the Black Stars? In, in, yes, yes. For, the, for, for, for your favorite teams. <laughs> 
I mean, Black Ghana is my favorite team, obviously. Yeah. After mm -hmm. Ghana, Netherlands. And if Ghana can't win it, then I hope for the Netherlands to win it because I think the World Cup hasn't treated Netherlands fairly for what, yeah. they, what they've given to the world. I mean, they've been to the final twice. They've lost both times. No, they've been to the final twice. They've yeah. lost uh, all the three times. The last was in 2010, when I, which I think they deserved to, to win, win. And, they, and they didn't win by that last minute in yesterday ago. So I think for what the Netherlands have given to the world and to the World Cup and for the players they've produced, the Ballon d'Or winners, the Champions League wins for, mm. for Ayas. Yes. I think they deserve to win the World Cup. I don't know if their team is good enough. As for Ghana, I mean, we all know we are going there to try. Inshallah! <laughs> to go where? <laughs> but I, I, second. I, yes. I, just, I just hope that Messi wins the World Cup. Then we call the, the GOAT debate once and for all. I mean, even without the World Cup, he's the GOAT. I mean, he doesn't need the World Cup to be Emba the GOAT. He doesn't need the World Cup to be the GOAT. He's the GOAT oh. without, even without, ah. without the World Cup. <laughs> Ghana, Argentina. Hey, Ghana, Portugal, World Cup final. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you might both go home, just like uh, the last time. <laughs> all right, so uh, you had uh, Perez Ezwakwal, Ghana Web Sports Editor, uh, Sports Editor at Pulse, Imando Ayamga, the richest <laughs> young sports journalist in, in Ghana. Yes. A a big man. Man. He's a big man. <laughs> big man. Yeah. Big man. Yeah. Is. So that's Imando Ayamga. On this episode of the Ghana Web Mundia, today we look at the country and all the issues uh, that came up when they got to the building and all that. My name is Joel Eshen. We'll come your way again on Monday as we bring you another episode of the Ghana Web Mundial Show. Proudly brought to you by Kempon Travel and Tour, the official traveling agency for the 2022 FIFA World Cup. Keep reading news on ghanaweb.com. Until we meet again, it's bye for now. Don't forget, today is Friday. Thank you.